Okay, now finally we have a cropped down, fully cut out and placed fantasy composition with at least five elements. Now what I'm gonna do is start playing with the, the lighting and the coloring on those elements. And the way to do it safely is to start with the foreground or start with the far background. I'm just gonna choose foreground here because I know I want this foreground to be more colorful. And I'm going to make a duplicate of that layer. And I do that by hitting on a Mac, Command J, which should be Control J on your PC. And now that I have a duplicate of it, I go to Image, Adjustments. And I'm first gonna play with the lighting. And for that, it just slipped off there, Image, Adjustments, Levels. It shows me with this histogram that on this layer of my volcanic rock, there are a whole lot of there are a whole lot more dark pixels. There's almost nothing that's lighter than about a 50% gray. So if I want to contrast that more and what's called even out the histogram, so that's a, a better proportion of highlights and midtones and shadows. I can move, these are called sliders, I can move the highlight slider, the white square, a triangle in Photoshop, over to the left, and that really increases the contrast and really brings that forward. I don't wanna do that too much with the dark slider because you'll see that there are a lot of black shadows and I, if I move it too far forward to the right, um, it will make pixels that were different values before, all of a sudden it will turn them into solid black pixels. And that's not good. That, that takes uh, pixel content away from your image. Just as though if I move the white too far over, it turns pixels that were formerly lots of different variations of, of color and value and makes them solid white. So for this element, I want to get as much contrast as possible without taking away pixel content. And then the other option I have is I can make it use the midtone slider here and just adjust them all kind of on average a little bit brighter, which I don't think works for my image, or all on contrast a little bit darker. And I might push them just a little bit darker as a midtone, but not too much. Maybe like there. And then I say, okay. And all of that is just in one history state of levels. So I can always just click back before it and click back on it. Or I can just toggle with Command Z on my Mac or Control Z on your PC and just see if I liked the changes that it made. And I do. So I want to keep those. Okay, next. I want to play with the temperature of the color. And right now, if I zoom in on the image, I can see that there's kind of bluer grays in the image, oranger grays. And I don't want to lose that variation. I don't want everything to be orange, everything to be blue. But I can shift it a little bit. And all I know is I want it to feel more colorful. So to change the color temperature, this will be subtle, but I want to go to Image Adjustments and then Color Balance. So the top four are all about lighting, lights and darks. The next seven are all about color. And of these color ones, we're going to use Color Balance and then we're going to use Hue Saturation. And those are the only ones I'm going to teach this semester because they should do everything you need. So Color Balance. You can affect the shadows, you can affect the highlights, or you can affect the midtones. I always start with the midtones. And I'm just going to maybe up the reds a little bit, and you'll see what that does. And then maybe up the blues a little bit. And it kind of shifts the temperature of the color. So now it's kind of lit in a more purplish light. I can up the greens a little bit.
And so now it's a little bit more balanced again. Or I can take them all down. And you'll see it's a little balanced again. So it's all about how these um, line up with each other in the midtones. So if you want to shift the temperature, you pull one different than the others. So I think maybe I'll leave it about there for midtones. Then I can do that for shadows, like maybe I want a little bit extra blue just in the shadows. And then in the highlights, maybe I want a little bit of extra yellow in the highlights. And to do that, I bring up red and green. Because together, these are light primaries, they'll bring a little bit more yellow into the highlights. So these are very subtle shifts. They're going to become a lot more apparent why, why they're needed um, as we're finishing everything off, like finding little adjustments. So. With levels and with color, so if I toggle on and off in my history just the color balance, you'll see it's subtle, but it does make a big difference, especially once we have everything colored the way we want. So that was before color balance. This is after. There's just a little bit more color in the midtones, in the highlights, and in the shadows, and they're a little bit more differentiated, which is what I was looking for. Now if I want something more dramatic from the color, I want to use image adjustments, hue saturation. And the, the most valuable thing here is the saturation, which means the intensity of the color on everything, on the master range. So if I take that all the way up, that's as much color as that those pixels can give me. But that obviously doesn't look right. So let me take that down a little bit. And I see how much it can actually handle. So that's maybe about as much color as those pixels can handle. The tool is a little bit bigger for you. All right. Um, I can also play with the actual color of it. So I can just shift it overall a little bit more towards red, a little bit more towards yellow. But the problem is if you push this too far, then you lose that kind of diversity of color in it the further you get from the middle, from zero. But I might just slide it a little bit, two notches. And then you can play with the overall lightness and darkness, but levels is a better tool for this. So the main thing is saturation here. How intense do you want your colors? All right, so I'm gonna make mine pretty intense. And you can see that makes a more dramatic difference to the color than just color balance alone. The reason you do it in that order is because levels gives you the contrast you want. Color balance gives you the, the temperature and the variations that you want. And then you can add saturation. But if you add saturation before you do the color balance, you won't get that same difference between the, the highlights, the midtones, and the, um, the shadows. And so that's my original reference layer. Those are the, the high quality pixels I brought in from Pixabay. Nothing wrong with that photo, but this gives me a lot more color, a lot more to work with. And that's what I want for my image. So color makes a dramatic difference. Now I can go to the next layer back, these crystals. And I know I want this crystal to show up a little bit differently. So I'm going to go through those same steps. I'm going to make a duplicate of it. Command J. 
image adjustments first levels and here i'm just going to squeeze the histogram i'm going to push the highlights right to their pixels put the shadows right to their pixels and then maybe make the whole thing a little bit lighter overall because it's in the foreground so that's a big difference between that and that so that's kind of brightness and contrast but we use levels for it next the color temperature you see how yellow that is I don't mind that it could be a yellow crystal, but I want it to feel lit by the same kind of purplish light. So I go to color balance. And I'm gonna increase the reds and increase the blues. This is in highlights. So now in midtones, I'm gonna do the same thing. Actually, maybe decrease the reds a little in the midtones and increase the blues. And then in shadows, I'm gonna Try increasing the green a little bit and the blues. Yes, I like that. And now that color, it looks a little bit pinkish and bluish and yellowish. It's got more differentiation to it. <laughs> it's a hard word to say, but an important art word. All right. Now... Overall, I can go to hue saturation and I can decide, well, do I want to push those colors you know, to their extremes? No. Do I want to take it down so there isn't any color? No. I want color. So I'm going to up it a little bit. And then I can just shift the hue a little bit to one side or the other. Okay, that one's done. And you can always go back and dial these down. Remember, we, we did them as duplicates. So we can even play with the opacity of those alterations, because we can be heavy-handed sometimes. And then decide how much of that effect we want in lighting and color. So if you have the memory to do it, and because I'm only working at 72 pixels per inch, I do, I can make copies of each layer. Okay, now this crystal. Now this is a good demo example because this crystal doesn't have color. It almost looks like a black and white photo. It, it might be, but I still do it the same way. I start with image adjustments. Oh, I start by copying it. Then I do image adjustments levels. Increase the contrast. Maybe brighten it a bit overall without trying to lose too much pixel content. And now this is where it gets interesting. If I do color balance, but there's no real color in it, this is the shadows. It's just going to shift everything to be pretty monochrome, right? It's hard to get differ differentiation. So what I'm going to try to do is just shift the blues for the shadows, increase those, increase the greens for the midtones, and increase the reds for the highlight. But it doesn't give me a dramatic difference. It just gives me a little bit of color. What's going to give me dramatic difference if, is if I go to image adjustment hue saturation now and I really bring that saturation up, then it will start to give me those different colors. And you can do that even from a black and white photo. Now, there's this box here that says colorize. And if you really want to just change all the colors, especially if something gray, you can hit colorize and then just change its hue, but that truly will make it monochromatic. So you can see how I was doing better using color balance first 
to get some difference in the color that's already there. And then I can play with the 